So we're in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress 2022. I'm here with Mark Atkinson. He's SVP and head of radio access networks at Nokia Mobile Networks. Mark, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what do you consider as the biggest development in radio access network capabilities that we can expect to see in the next few months? We're, we're continuing to do a lot of work with our customers to build out the coverage of 5G. We're using typically um, low band spectrum for a coverage layer coupled with uh, C band spectrum for capacity. And we're starting to then bring more and more capabilities to the end user in terms of what they can really do with their 5G devices. Then the other th big trend that we're starting to see um, more of this year is private wireless networks. So delivering 5G into enterprises and with all the capabilities that could bring. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, last year in June, Nokia uh, launched its latest generation of radio access network products. Uh, how did that go and how can we expect that to evolve further this year? Was extremely well received. Our customers, customers have been waiting for the new generation of ReefShark SOC system on chip based products to come to market. We launched our new airscale baseband technology, which today is the most scalable high capacity baseband in the market and suitable for all technologies from 2G through to 5G. We also launched a portfolio of radio products going from massive MIMO down to um, standard radio heads. And, and that coupled together has given us a really competitive offering, which we can really then build upon as we move into this year. So uh, 5G is constantly evolving and already we're hearing about 5G advance and that's on the horizon. How do you see the products developing uh, to realize the, the aspirations of, of that technology, that next leap in 5G? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great question and it's cu coupled very much with your past two questions that we're already building the foundation for 5G advanced. All of the hardware we deploy into the network today is 5G advanced ready. Then when we bring 5G advanced software capabilities based on release 17, release 18, we're bringing what some would say is the real 5G to the users, both um, consumers as well as private enterprise customers, ultra low latency communication being a big topic, reduced capability IoT, IoT devices for machine to machine communications. So lots of um, really exciting things. And then of course, like more future looking topics like AR and VR glasses and so on. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, still a lot of road ahead for yeah, 5G. Yeah, lots, That's lots of fun sure. ahead of us. Absolutely. Um, so recently you published a blog about four component carrier aggregation. Uh, how do you see the importance of this as a differentiator to uh, Nokia and what does it mean for your customers? It's, it's a huge differentiator for us and our customers. So the ability of carrier aggregation allows customers to pull their spectrum together or so-called stack their spectrum together. And that enables two things, coupling the FDD with the TDD. So typically the low band with the mid band spectrum, you can enhance the coverage area of high capacity 5G and you're increasing throughputs and capacity as a whole for every user in those individual cells. So we are now, we believe, up to one year ahead with four carrier aggregation, which will come to market later this year. We are also working through the IODT, so the interoperability device testing with the key chipset players right now, and really excited to see that coming into consumer devices. Okay. Um, so. Uh, you know, there's a lot of trends here at Mobile World Congress, and one of the ones that's really come out this year is the focus on sustainability, uh, energy efficiency, and, and reducing the industry's carbon footprint. Uh, what is Nokia doing in this respect? Incredibly important topic, and you would have seen perhaps the, the keynote from our CEO, Pekka Lundmark, yesterday, where he put a big focus on um, sustainability um, and leveraging the technologies out there to achieve that. We have one booth out of three actually in, on our mobile networks arena today, which is dedicated to exactly that topic. We've even got trees on the booth and, and we're doing a lot there. We have liquid cool base station, which we launched um, yesterday, which is using water to clean the base station. Water is a fantastic medium for reducing heat out of the products. 
We've got some 20 different measures with hardware and software, which are reducing the power consumption and carbon footprint generated by the products. So really a, a lot of good things coming and, and it's a topic which won't go away. We know, know in the world today that um, green energy will become more and more important and um, we're very much committed to having best in class products in this space. So there's quite a few strong themes here at the show this year on cloud ran is one of them. Uh, what are your thoughts on this and, and how do you see cloud ran fitting alongside traditional bare metal systems? I mean, can the two work in a hybrid environment? I'm really glad you asked the question. It's one of my favorite ones. So I, I believe we should be talking about hybrid networks rather than classical or cloud networks because there are not many greenfield operators out there and most operators will transition to cloud in phases. They might do it in geographies that you might go to cloud run in a big city uh, much earlier than you go in the rest of the network. Or you might do it in layers that you move 5G to cloud RAN, but you leave um, 4G and older technologies on traditional RAN. But the key is the feature parity, that wherever you are in the network, you want to offer the users the same quality of experience, which means that we as Nokia have a huge focus on making sure that every feature that works in classical RAN will work in cloud RAN at the same time, and then provide that seamless experience to the users. Okay, fantastic. So uh, an, an awful lot happening then in the radio access network and uh, still plenty to come, it seems like. So uh, I'm sure we'll be back here again in Barcelona next year talking about the, the next iteration of what's out there for the mobile operators. Yeah, we're, we're really excited what the, what the year has ahead of us. So, so we have um, a lot of momentum behind us today. We're, we're winning customers, we're bringing new product to market, we're launching new networks, and, and really, really looking forward to the rest of the year and then reporting back in 2023 to see how things have gone. Okay, excellent. Mark, thanks very much for your insights and for joining us today, thank you. Thanks for having me, have a good week.